previously on 4x4 Ventures. After an adventure-filled first part to this two-part series where we travel from Matamba Bush Camp, spent two nights at Bloberg and then four nights at Mazar Campsite in the Mapungubwe National Park, very nice. We now pick up the adventure to Makuya Nature Reserve, northeast of the Limpopo, and head into the Kruger National Park. What could an adventurer ask more for? What a count to 4 by 4 ventures. Welcome to another 4x4 Ventures episode. We're here in the Limpopo province. Stay tuned, it's going to be an epic series. From Mazar campsite, the Mokuya Nature Reserve is 214 kilometers via the R572 and the R525. This should take 2 hours and 43 minutes, but potholes en route make for a longer drive. I had to make a detour to Polokwane to get the Ranger assessed, which made for a 6 hour trip. This turned out to be a memorable adventure. Um, we've got an hour and 10 minutes to go to get to Makuya. Um, yeah, went into Polokwane today to get the Ranger looked at. Everything seems fine, they couldn't find an issue, so rather safe than be sorry. So, yeah, we've driven through Louis Trichart up now, we've turned towards Pafuri, and I think Makuya is on the way on the edge there of the Kruger National Park. So. Uh, excited to get there. There's not much sun left. It's two minutes past five, so it could be an exciting night's worth driving. I have no idea where the campsite is, and I had a chat with Ed and Chris, and they couldn't find the campsite. Okay, so I'm following Google Maps and I just turned off the tar road and I'm now on a road that doesn't look like it's been used in quite a while. It is happening. It is really, really happening. And I'm excited, man. This is, this is what it's supposed to be about. Take a road, you're not sure where you're going. You put your faith in, in a mapping system and you hope for the best. It says I've only got 6.6 .6 kilometers to get to wherever. I don't I don't know, but and this is this is quite a this is quite a challenging track to be honest. Oh. Hit the uh, the hitching point of the trailer. This is something, and I'm 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 racing I'm racing the sun because if, if you can imagine, this only gets me to the gate. There's still a road more to get to the campsite. So after a massive massive screw up by Google Maps uh, if I just stuck to the tar road I would have got to the gate the gate is now closed and it's 10 minutes past 6 I've asked the ladies here there's a little village next to the gate I've asked them to please try and help me out to get in a really nice lady she opened the gate for me and now she's gonna draw me a map because apparently it's quite difficult to get to but yeah, we're in the Makuya Reserve. Okay, 
Okay, so we are in the Mokuya Nature Reserve and the sun has just gone down. I'm not going past 20 kilometers an hour. Look, it's not legal to drive around in reserves at night, but yeah, this is a this is a game of catch up for me. Hopefully that's where the other lads are. Otherwise, uh, I'll just set up the rooftop tent and doss there tonight and try and figure it all out tomorrow. That's worst case scenario, but I'm sure it'll be all good on the other side. I'll chat to you when I get there. Or if anything comes up in between. What an adventure. What an adventure. Getting to Makuya campsite, just as the gents were assessing the state of the ablutions, we settled down to celebrate Ed's birthday. Arriving at any campsite in the dark always leaves me with the excitement of what awaits in the morning, as purple crested lurries tested the fruit in the large fig trees that line the Lavuvu River's edge. We're here at Mukuya and it's been a fantastic two days so far. Um, it was a long drive in the other night and uh, I'm so sorry I haven't been on the camera it's just that I've, I was absolutely shattered I mean I think I drove a total of 600 odd kilometers and getting in late at night to find Ed and Chris had already set up camp and I had to set up at night so yeah just overall quite buggered really and we're on our way now to world view Ed went up there yesterday and apparently it's quite nice. The roads here are next level. I mean, this is definitely 4x4 only, I would say. Um, so if you're thinking of coming out to Mokuya, just be very, very um, prepared for a lot of rocks and very uneven surface. It's, it's, is, it is hard going on the vehicles. So, you know, five kilometers an hour if that in some spots. The campsite that we have is just beautiful. It overlooks the Levuvu River. Uh, there's water flowing through. We've seen a couple of crocs. We saw an elephant yesterday drinking down in the reeds. And yeah, just overall very nice. Uh, we even had the opportunity to recover um, some guys that are doing from biometrics, I think they're called something like that. Um, essentially they test the, the condition of rivers, the ecosystems and the creatures that live in those rivers. And yeah, shame they got proper, proper stuck. And we were able to use the wild dog gear, recovery gear, which is fantastic I might add. A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. Um, and just gives you so much confidence on recovery and we were able to get the fellas out I mean they were off axle it was actually quite a quite a hard recovery so we used the winch setup and the the synthetic rope just did its job it did its job so yeah I'm sure those fellas are happy that we were able to get them out Let's get to the world view. Mukuya has the world view lookout point as a major point of interest, as well as the giant baobab trees that are common to that area. The views are spectacular from the mountain top. Mukuya is a small 16,000 hectare reserve that forms part of the Limpopo Transfrontier Park and borders fenceless with the Kruger National Park, which means game roams freely between the two parks. This is an area that can be driven in a 4x2, however, I would advise a 4x4 as some inclines, especially when towing, require 4x4. Drifting away from the main routes, the area has soft river sand in many areas, so make sure you have recovery gear you can rely on.
When exploring this area, remember that it is a big five area, so buffalo, elephant and lion are around. Be vigilant and aware to never drift too far away from your vehicle. The area is littered with deep gorges as the Levuva River snakes its way towards the Limpopo River. Speaking of soft sand, and as we had not seen any wildlife, Ed and I headed to explore for a spot along the Levuva River that had deeper waters. Our hopes were to find a secret tiger fishing hole and instead we found a great river track and so we had some fun. We're here at Mokuya campsite and we've been here for four nights. Tomorrow morning we wake up really, really early. We got a long drive um, all the way to Timbuti, Ed and myself. And unfortunately, it's at that point of the trip where we split off with Chris. He's going to carry on driving through the Kruger National Park and head down south. Myself and Ed, Timbuti uh, for three nights and then Jackalberry for three nights. Mokuya. Well, this is a bit of a strange one because it truly is a wild campsite. The roads getting here, however, very difficult. And if towing, just be very careful because the rocky terrain is, is something else. Um, what we found is that we just don't have the urgency to get out and drive around and explore because in some sections it's uh, fairly bad. Uh, I dropped a line in this morning to see if I could get a bite on the tiger fish, but the Lvuvu River is wild in this section of um, Makuya. So, you know, ever doubtful and watchful for lions. Uh, Ed saw lions last night. We've heard hyena in the last two nights that um, we were up. Um, so, yeah, just, and, and crocodiles, you know, they're, they're in the river. We saw one up on the bank earlier this morning. So, all in all, just a very wild place. Um, we haven't seen too much game. A lot of bobby johns and monkeys, which have behaved themselves, which is always a good thing especially with the trailers i mean i've heard some horror stories where they rip into canvas but yeah i mean we've still enjoyed it uh, the three of us have always had an adventure heading out of Mokuya, it just wasn't done with us yet as it put chris into soft sand while towing the trailer nothing us hardy fellas couldn't deal with right but more to the point though a good set of recovery tracks makes the world of difference in similar conditions my final thought on Makuya, it is a place for the hardy traveller, someone that enjoys the less obvious destination, a place with great birding opportunities and the possibilities of catching the freshwater tiger fish, where the roads are rocky and the views are impressive. This is a place of solitude and hardy conditions. Be self-sufficient and enjoy the quiet. This could be a spot for you. This was going to be a big day of driving. From Makuya to Tampoeti, entering at the Pafuri Gate in the very north of Kruger National Park, this was a 374km trip, but sticking to the speed limit of 50km per hour with the occasional stop would see us on the road for 8.5 hours. But this is a trip that will put a smile on your face. It's the Kruger. We are in the Kruger. We are, have entered in at Pafuri Gate. I've never been up north here. The idea is for Ed and myself to get to Tambuati, which by the sounds of things is an eight and a half hour drive, maybe longer. Thank goodness today though that it's overcast because I think yeah, I think yesterday we were at 43 degrees Celsius and the day before 42. So it has been an absolute scorcher of the last couple of days and feeling really really tired today and i'll tell you why because last night a massive massive gust of wind um, that seemed to last for about four or five hours gale force winds 
tour through our campsite, uh, took the L-shaped awning off the Conqueror Compact Platinum 2, disturbed Ed's 360 awnings, so sleep wasn't great and I think we were running around at about half past one in the morning between 10 o'clock in the evening to about half past one in the morning trying to get everything sorted out so yeah not a great night's sleep if I'm honest with you and I still haven't had that cup of coffee we were up at I don't know five o'clock this morning packing away trailers and trying to get on the road as soon and as quickly as we could because we've got such a long day's drive ahead uh, I'm looking forward to having a good night's sleep in a luxury tent so crisp sheets fresh linen oh what a pleasure and also I need to organize I need to get my clothes washed because I'm on my last pair of clothes and yeah, it's getting serious now eh? and so happy to be in the Kruger National Park one of the best if not the best national reserve in South Africa and, and a place I'm very fond of so let's see how we get going today and uh, yeah enjoy Check this out. Dude, what's the problem, man? Enjoy, bro. Go outside? Yeah, we will do, my man. We'll see you soon. We've, we're beginning the trip down to Timbuati, but I just wanted to say something to all of you out there um, and to all of those we've met en route. It really is an honor and a privilege to meet you and thank you for all of your support. It's, it's so great to catch up with you and see your vehicles and just chat, you know, and and hear all the kind things you guys are saying by no means are we doing any of this for those reasons we're doing it to inspire you to get out there and adventure and and explore you know these new places and, you know, life's too short so it really does mean a lot to us a big thank you from all of us Chris Ed and myself and yeah hope you guys are enjoying these episodes and if you are, leave a comment. We'd love to catch up with you and have chit chats. We've got a long drive ahead, so let's see how it goes.
After a long day's drive and already some sightings that soothe my adventurous spirit, Ed and I roll into Tambuati tented campsite number 27 as the gates were closing. Simply put, we were shattered. But as the day turns to night, we enjoy the story that is the Kruger National Park. All the things that we love about the wild places we visit unfolds and we, like two kids in a candy store, indulge in every minute of it. Tonight we're doing a fillet that's probably the biggest fillet I've ever done. I don't know why it's so big, but that's how it came. So at least we've got a bit of chow for tomorrow. And side of potato and some garlic bread. And we're just going to let this one cook nice and slowly when the coals are ready. And then add the potato. And that's it, eh? we're going to put a bit of mushroom in here, some pepper and some um, Worcester sauce and some bry salts. And we we'll do your usual little red wine. No red wine tonight because Ed drank it all. Um, so we're going to be replacing the red wine with Worcester sauce. So it's going to be more of an earthy flavor. We're just playing around, always mixing it up. Adapting and there's lots of hojos, eh? My man, the nightlife has been next level, dude. Like, next level, hey? I honestly don't think neither Ed nor myself was expecting the nightlife here, I mean, lions roaring, I don't know, two, two kilometers out. We've got honey badgers, we're fighting honey badgers here. We've got hyenas by the fence. We've got spotted Janet running through camp. I mean, what more can you ask for? It is fantastic. A little too many honey badgers though, but yeah, I mean, I suppose Timbuti, that's what you get, especially when the bush is looking so, so green and so thick as it is. We have a cow for dinner. Mm -hmm. Please, sir. Mm. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it to look quite like this, but that's a win in my book. So what we do is, we hit Tambueti now. The gates open either half past four or five. Head along the tar road, H7. Till the S39, we break off early, we follow the we, we, we sat up last night cooking a bry and we were buggered, eh? Yeah. And uh, we'd had a couple of cold ones and only a couple since we weren't really uh, in the mood. So we sit in there and the next thing I see old Ed bolt up. And whenever Ed bolts up, you take notice because eh, it's a proper bolt up. And we turn around and there's this torpedo moving through the grass. But at speed, eh? And it came way too quickly for us. We way too quickly. Ready. We didn't have any defensive tools. Nothing. I mean, so Tamburti is a fence camp. But you check white back vultures. Hey, that's awesome. Man. Oh, it's just magic here, man. It's just alive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. With birds and everything. So we're sitting there and uh, we bolt up. Check this out. And then uh, the squirrel right here on the deck here. 
<coughs> and the next minute this small juvenile honey badger comes rushing in to the dustbin area which is where we're seated so ed and i we we back off and this little bugger is violent eh? yeah so he doesn't go for the dustbin at first he just checks us out and then he he snarls at us but like an aggressive snarl and both of us we always have this thing like if a lion comes in the camp or whatever we must go at it to try and protect ourselves this thing snarled we almost rolled back down the hill to the fence we were both <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a scary thing it actually. was a scary thing man yeah and it had a proper go and i was like this little thing man where is it coming from i've had the big honey badger here at tomboji come right up onto the deck no problem leave but this guy was an aggressive oh, yeah we huddled behind the fire we put the fire between ourselves and this honey badger and i tell you if you had if we had caught that on camera eh? Yeah, no, it's an aggressive little guy. Tonight we we there prepared for it. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. Yeah. What an absolute cracker of a day uh, Ed and I have had today. Uh, we we woke up a little bit late. We slept in for a change, which was really really welcome. Uh, we had a nice coffee in the morning and a bit of a chit chat, and then just proceeded to clean trailers and clean the camera gear and. Then we got ready for a game drive. We left at about half past two in the afternoon and yeah, had some very nice sightings. We're on our way back now, we went to visit the dam and we're driving back to Open Gate, we just got to pick up some wood for tonight's braai, I believe Ed's cooking a mean steak, so looking forward to that. I think tomorrow is going to be a full day's game drive in the Kruger National Park. We've seen the usual today, um, elephants, giraffe, we saw some ground hornbill which was a nice sighting. And then at the dam, obviously, we saw two bull elephants. They looked like they were having a go at each other. A massive crocodile um, and some hippo. But always a pleasure. You know, when you're in the Kruger, it's just a, it's just a fuzz that comes with it that I'm really, really fond of. So I enjoy it. The bush is looking so green where we are now um, and very thick. Looking forward to what tomorrow holds. And tonight, if that honey badger visits us, the sun has obviously clearly set. Uh, we are back at Tumbuti camp. It is quarter to eight in the evening, and already. The honey badgers have begun their nonsense. I'm just going to walk you over to Ed because, hey, we weren't expecting this, but it's happening. It's happening here, yeah. and I don't know how I feel about it, to be quite honest. So the last two nights, the honey badgers have just come into camp. One of them is quite an aggressive one, obviously a young one, and they've been giving us a lot of grief, knocking over the dustbin. But it's almost like they don't care that we're here. But tonight, they took it to another level. It's Honey Badger Wars. Come check this out. So we run a cable to charge our trailers from the tent. And we've just been, it's just been lying on the ground the last two nights. No problem. Come check this out. So, we, all of a sudden we saw this cable like a, like a fishing line going. Like, you, like when you catch a fish, like zzz, didn't make that noise, but the cable was going. We're like, what's going on here? So 
And then we reach halfway point to the car, right over around here, somewhere. Well, anyway, the honey badger had this in his mouth and he was moving into the bushes. Crazy. So then we thought we managed to wrestle it back. Then we heard something about the conqueror. So we moved. We arrived. We arrived at the echo. The cables which were here had been moved. Then we heard the little bugger over at the conqueror. Had the cables all neatly tied up here and everything. When Ryan got you, the cables were everywhere, streamed across. And then all of a sudden the bugger came back, grabbed the, the cable on the other side of the conqueror, and he was into the bushes. Managed to wrestle it back with a lot of hard work, and now we've devised a plan. We're now running the cables. If you have a look here. Let me just readjust this one. See, it's a little bit more vulnerable than the other half. We've run the cables onto the top of the echo. So now, theoretically, as far as the eye can see, the cables are out of reach of old Stoffel. If we feel the cables move tonight in the tent, we know we've hooked a big one. <laughs> but it's next level here at Tambuerti. So far I think it's Badgers 6, Ed and Ryan 0. But I think with this solution, it's Badgers 6, Ed and Ryan 1. Absolutely awesome. To have this happening around you, they're a little too tame in my opinion, but I mean we had lions roaring, the hyenas are walking past the fence, honey badgers, the nightlife here at Tambuerti. Fantastic. Awesome beer. Yeah, so there you go. We, we're battling we're battling the honey badgers. And we have cable dressed up for days. But we think we've made a proper plan here. Um, it's quite strange. These little guys, they move in. There's all these paths in Timbuti. And with the high grass, all you just see is little silverbacks. So it almost looks like velociraptors. You know that scene from Jurassic Park where the velociraptors are running through the grass? Very much like that. And we're actually expecting another one or two to come through just now. So the game is afoot. Here we go. The Janet's coming in. Well, that's okay. We like the Janet. She, she's pretty cool. Janet magic. Doesn't cause any problems, but it's cute to see the little honey badgers cruising around here. We're gonna enjoy this Janet. morning in Timbuerti and we are on a game drive it is quarter to six in the morning and we're moving along there's a couple of jackal out there it's 
quite crazy to think how high and how quickly the sun rises it's uh, already getting very bright but yeah we're on a game drive and let's see what we see As written on the Sand Parks website, and I quote, The Timburti Tented Camp is a small camp situated on the banks of the Timbavati River, on the western boundary of the Kruger National Park, approximately two kilometers east of Open Rest Camp and the entry gate. Due to the size and location of this camp, Timburti is one of the more popular camps in the park. A great feature is a boma at tented sites, which makes it ideal for small groups to gather around the campfire and relive the animal sightings for the day. For the birding enthusiast, Timburti offers a bird hide in which to spend long hours looking for that exclusive raptor that has, up to now, eluded you. The natural bush feeling is kept inside the camp, which has the result of emphasizing guest privacy. End quote. This is our experience of this area and what we spotted. Enjoy the magic of this special place.
uh, sitting around the fire at uh, the Timbuti campsite, number 27. What we soon realized or learned is that Timbuti has a, a lot of honey badgers, a lot. We had six different honey badgers come into camp to raid the dustbin. Whilst the first one was amazing to watch, a non-hostile fella at six honey badgers. You begin to realize that there's too many honey badgers. And that same fella that came in the other night that was very hostile and aggressive towards us, he came in again last night and he was still hostile and aggressive. I think when camping at Timbuti, you know, while sitting around the fire might be everyone's preference and it is definitely ours I think I think by the fourth or fifth honey badger I said to Ed look man this is just this is this is crazy I mean they're they're they they, they they're hardy little things hey they're, they're not tame pets they're wild hey? um, so we, we went and sat up on the deck for it for a bit but yeah, I think Timbuti's dustbins are a big problem, eh? But anyways, we're on the game drive now and it's early morning and it's clear, clear, clear skies. The air is beautiful. Another fantastic day in the Kruger National Park. Man, I love this place. So after an amazing three nights staying at Timbuti Tented Campsite, where we enjoyed the break from teardown setup and the dirty linen, we woke up early packed up and began the journey down to the south of the park. Our exit point was Crocodile Bridge Gate and onwards to Marloth Park which meant for another long day's drive. Marloth Park is marked at 197 kilometers from Timbuti, so another magic day's drive for Ed and myself. This was a trip I hadn't done before where we drove new roads and I got to see some of the other sides of the Kruger National Park. Our destination Jackalberry River Lodge but still time to enjoy the magic adventure of this trip. So, early morning, as we packed up and have left Tambuati, I highly recommend Tambuati as a stopover point, even for three nights, it's an absolutely magic place. We hitched up the trailers and we're now going on a game drive and we begin the long journey south from Tambuati. And our destination for today is Marloth Park, where we'll be staying at Jackalberry Lodge for three nights. The plan is to take it nice and easy, and hopefully we get to find those cats. was fantastic we just came across a pride of lion lying up next to the river behind some rocks but the view wasn't that great but yeah we saw them yeah magic eh? the Kruger always delivering every corner on the s100 is a gem so I'm really stoked because oh, it's two of the big cats today Fantastic. The time now is 20 minutes past 9 and Ed and I had to move. We've got some distance to cover.
we're here at the viewpoint um, on the Lebombo Mountains and on the one side is Mozambique and on the other side is obviously the Kruger National Park and looking down into the valley which is quite pretty our next stop is uh, Lower Sabi and then Crocodile Bridge so heading on out of the Kruger National Park we haven't seen uh, too much in the afternoon or lunchtime to afternoon we obviously saw the lions and we got a glimpse of that leopard this morning but yeah a very nice drive um, Jeez, some beautiful roads that we've driven um, we drove through a valley with all these dead leadwoods which was something else um, and then Ed gave me an education on Ranger Walter who got attacked by not one but two lions back in the day as a night ranger on his horse so we stopped and had a look at the um, placard that's out there on that road um, quite a harrowing thought really if you think about it but yeah nice view fantastic to be here but the temperature is hot eh? it's a scorcher so looking forward to jumping back in the ranger and putting that aircon on because it's hot exiting the park at crocodile bridge gate we make our way to one of my favorite private campsites jackalberry river lodge Visit my episode above if you're keen to find out more about this campsite. It's great for small families and close proximity to both Malalan Gate and Crocodile Bridge Gate. The bird life and the dip pool makes this a magic spot. Be aware though that there are only two camps at the time of this episode. Okay, so the last day of the trip. So... It's a nice day, it's overcast, it's quarter past 10 and I thought I'd go on a game drive to celebrate a fantastic trip. True to form, the Kruger held an ace up its sleeve and as a patient observer it delivered me with some amazing sightings. Sit back and enjoy these moments with me. We simply are privileged to have this national treasure at our doorstep. So sitting here at Jackalberry River Lodge and reflecting on the trip that we've just done, a 23 day overlanding trip following a very loose guide to the old ivory route, Matamba, Bloberg, Mapangubwe, Makuya, Chambuati and now here at Marloth Park. I reflect and I think 
What an epic, epic, epic trip. It's been fantastic in every way and means. Yes, there's been issues with the Ranger and the Conqueror Compact Platinum. But in fairness, remember to always do your checks done before you go on any trip. With this whole COVID lockdown thing, it's been a little bit difficult for me to get that all sorted. So I put it at bay and it bit me in the butt, so to speak. So a learning from doing a massive trip like this is to always go as prepared as you can, especially with your rig and trailer if you are carrying a trailer. Something else I learned when doing a trip like this is don't overthink things. You, the illusion of control is very real. I think let go, adapt, and try and make the most of a bad situation. I think adaptability is what makes these trips very memorable and almost special. Um, being able to change and move with the circumstances that you're thrown at. Yeah, a good trip, a lot of distance travel, plus minus when I get back to the concrete jungle, about 3,000 kilometers. So, yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the longest trips I've ever done. 23 days, I wanted to see if I could do it as a self-sustained unit with both trailer and vehicle. And yeah, very easy to do. I think on a trip like this, the most important things are obviously your wood, your food, your liquid, and um, being able to keep them cold and a constant supply of power. Watch out for those campsites that have a lot of shade. Figure out where can you put your solar panels throughout the day. It can play a major role in the quality of power or recharge you're getting to your batteries. All in all, it's been a great trip with great mates and again doing great things. Actually very glad that we were able to do South Africa. We've got some amazing places to go and visit and see. And to be honest, I was really, really unprepared for the, the beauty of these places that we went and visited. I mean, some of them are just so scenic and have so much more to offer. And there's places that I'd like to go back to for sure. On that note, and with chatting about being able to do these trips, 4x4 Ventures is in a bit of a state of flux. We'd like to continue doing this and traveling around Southern Africa and Africa with you guys and, and bringing you these shows and if you guys want to be active in 4x4 Ventures then please head on over to Patreon I'd really appreciate it and it would mean an absolute world for me to be able to go and do this more often for you guys showing you what these places have to offer and more importantly inspire you to want to get out there and do these kind of things I think we become so fixated in the idea of running the day to day and we almost lose that balance to be able to go out there and do the things that we'd like to. And I think with this kind of information and a show like this, hopefully you get a little bit of information on your next trip, route planning, and most importantly, the inspiration to do it. So yeah, as always, we appreciate your support through all the social media channels. It really means a lot and the channel's doing very well because of you guys. Overlanding has become a real passion for me and trying to do these trips three to four times a year is something I'm really striving to achieve. I do think that Kruger National Park is a very special place and I would continue to come back here for sure. Just speaking of which, December I've got a family trip there so looking forward to that where we explore the northern section of Kruger National Park. Guys, I think if you've enjoyed this series, thank you so much for your support to all of you that we met out there on the road. It was fantastic to meet and greet and glad to see that we're inspiring you guys to go and do your next adventure. Keep traveling, keep trucking, stay safe and we'll always see you at the next one. I'm Ryan and this is 4x4 Ventures. Till the next one, cheers guys.